welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and I am Joy, and this is my beloved <laughs> Jim. And you are an important part of the family, and we want to hear from you. We want you to give us a jingle right here on our very live show and participate in this wonderful show that we have in store for you today. So give us a jingle at 205-271-2980 or call toll-free 1-800-221-9460. You can always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com, and we we will get back to you, we promise. But, hon, I know right now we're going to go to an interview. Right now we're going to speak with Dr. Chad Pecknold from the Catholic University. He's here to share about a wonderful conference, the Human Ecology Conference, brought to us by Napa Institute and Catholic University of America. Dr. Pecknold, what is the Human Ecology Conference? Please share with us. Yeah, thanks so much for having us on. It's uh, Andreas Widmar and I are co-sponsoring, co-chairing this great human ecology conference, uh, March 16th through 18th, three days of bringing business leaders together, CEOs, um, religious leaders together, uh, academics like myself, all converging around the idea of is faith and business compatible? And our answer is yes, faith and business are compatible. And it's actually Catholic social teaching that should inform it. If we bring the principles of, say, the Pope Leo XIII's Rerum Novarum, John Paul II's um, Santesimus Annus, and Pope Francis's Laudato Si, what happens to best business practices if we bring those principles to bear and we think exciting things happen? Well, Dr. Petnold, why is Catholic social teaching important to the business world? Well, look, I mean, the business world has its own well-worked-out uh, ideas about uh, how to make a profit. But Catholic social teaching has very well-worked-out ideas about how to put the human person at the center of things. And we believe that this is the truth that God wants us to share. Pope Francis talked about business as a vocation and as a noble vocation, which puts the person at the center. Put the person above profits, and you're going to see something extraordinary happen. And we think we've collected the right uh, uh, kinds of wisdom around these questions to bring the principles of Catholic social teaching to bear around how do we serve the human person? How do we serve our children, our families, our neighborhoods? How can we make business work in such a way that it reflects the beauty of the human person that the Catholic, uh, uh, our great faith, uh, lifts up and puts at the center of our hearts and our minds? Who are some of the speakers and what are the topics? Well, uh, we've got an exciting lineup. Um, I, I, I sort of wish we had the people from Doritos coming to speak to us. The, the Doritos Super Bowl pitch was, gave a nice pro-life message. I don't know if they had any, have any Catholic leaders at Doritos uh, uh, pu pushing uh, the dignity of the human person at the center, but we have some great leaders. Um, Frank Hanna, who EWTN viewers should know, uh, who talked about uh, talks a lot about uh, our responsibility with our money. We have Chris Wasserman, who's head of the Zermatt Summit, a, a group of business CEOs who meet annually to talk about how do we put persons over profits. We have Iqbal Quatid, who uh, has brought cell phones uh, into the poorest areas and has used commerce to lift up the poor. Uh, we have, of course, great Catholic leaders like George Weigel, well known to viewers, Mary Eberstadt, uh, Cardinal Turkson. Um, so we're very excited about a strong list of business leaders and leaders from the Catholic community to be able to talk about how faith uh, lifts up, elevates, purifies uh, business practices and makes uh, a contribution to the common good. Well, Dr. Pecknell, who can attend this conference, and what do you hope that the people will take away from this conference? Yeah, it's a conference which is, which is open to the public. People should go to uh, catholicbusinessconference.com to check it out and uh, think about joining us in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital at beautiful Catholic University of America. Um, I think they'll get a sense of... Uh, of a community that's really thinking through how do you apply Catholic principles to your business, your small business, your big business, but thinking about how business can be a vocation that is a calling from God and to 
embrace. Business as a vocation requires a whole community. So what I hope people will get is a sense of belonging to a project, a project of applying uh, the Catholic faith to their everyday business life and showing how it integrates their business better. Anything else we need to know, Doctor? I think that's it, except for I hope everyone visits the website, and uh, I hope you continue to uh, think about how Catholic social teaching can be applied in this great year of mercy. Mm. Well, we thank you so much for this time. We pray that there's great success in this conference, catholicbusinessconference.com, catholicbusinessconference.com. We're going to take a break at this point, and when we come back, we're going to be speaking about the Catholic Grandparents Association. I mean, being a grandparent is such a wonderful thing. I'm a grandparent. You're a grandparent. I'm a grandparent, too. We love being grandparents. It's filled with joy, sometimes with pain. Mm -hmm. uh, but we want you to participate in the show. Maybe you'll share about the influence of grandparents in your own life. It's 205-271-2980 or 800-221-9460. Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. We want to hear from you. You're an important part of the show. We're going to take a break. Please don't go away. home with Jim and Joy and this is the part of the show where we have guests and today we have two wonderful human beings Catherine Wiley and Michael LaCourt and they are founders of Catholic Grandparents Association did you ever think a thing existed and why did it take why did the church go this long without this association well we're gonna have some great answers and we're gonna tell you a beautiful story about being grandparents. Well, we want you to be a part of the show. It's live. Call us at 205-271-2980 or 1-800-221-9460. Shoot us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com. Hey, Joy, I think they got a picture of our grandchildren up. I hope they, they do. do. I'm you seeing see it those somewhere. People over oh, there. Yeah. Those are our grandchildren. Fifteen <laughs> of them. Wow. They're lots of fun. And they all come and you've always heard us tell the stories. They came for Christmas and they stayed three days, all twenty five of them. Yeah. And we le and when they left we were exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was fun. So but today we're going to tell the beautiful story about Grand Catholic Grandparents Association, Catherine Wiley and Michael now. Catherine, tell us what inspired you to start this beautiful association, so well, needed. <clears throat> well, I'm an Irish grandmother um, from County Mayo in Ireland, and I have ten beautiful grandchildren, blessed to have ten beautiful grandchildren, five boys and five girls. Um, and my husband and I, we've been married for 48 years this year, we live in a shrine village of Walsingham, it's known as the Nazareth of England. And I had become a grandparent myself, and I was there on Our Lady's birthday, the 8th of September, in the little medieval village, uh, Slipper Chapel, it's called. And I was wondering what I could give Our Lady for a birthday present. What would really please her? What, would, what can you give Our Lady for a birthday present? Mm -hmm. And the idea came to me that a pilgrimage to honor her parents, the grandparents of Jesus, St. Diocum and St. Anne, would not just please her, would truly delight her. So we started the very first grandparents pilgrimage ever in the world. Um, and very quickly with the thought came to honor all of our grandparents mm. alive and dead for all they had done for us down through the ages, particularly in the transmission of the faith. And that was in 2002. So the pilgrimage then went from Walsingham to Knock to the Shrine of Our Lady of Knock in Ireland, where we launched the Catholic Grandparents Association, which grew out of the pilgrimage. Okay. And it was really in response to a pastoral need because grandparents were coming and saying to us, do you know what it's like? Can we meet more than once a year? Can we talk to somebody? They immediately know when you're a grandparent, when they have a problem, that they can relate to you. So the, the association grew out of the pilgrimage, and I suppose it was because grandparents instinctively recognize the, the, the huge challenges that are facing families today, spiritually, financially, emotionally, physically, in so many ways. Mm -hmm. So 10 years later, 
nearly 10 years later, it's now all over the world, wow. in the Philippines and Australia and Africa and America. And again, I think it's because grandparents hear the call and they respond. They, they say yes immediately. Michael, how did you get involved with this great venture? You're director for the United States of America. Yes. What drew you into this? Um, well, the mission of the association is to help grandparents pass on the faith and keep prayer at the heart of family life. And I don't know who, what grandparent that doesn't tug on. Mm -hmm. um, right. So I was immediately drawn to say, hey, if I can help, you know, I'm here to help in any way that I can. And, and it's just been so wonderful to go out into the world now. And when you say that mission, people respond immediately. It's a mission they can understand. And it's also a mission that the church is very excited about. Okay. We're now a private association of the faithful, but we're on the fast track to become a public association of the faithful, which simply means that we are officially part of the church. And as a public association of the faithful, the church actually takes our mission and makes it their own. Mm -hmm. And then we would be helping the church through the by implementing that mission. Mm -hmm. So there's a very wonderful past that Catherine has created, and wonderful respect within the church because of all the work that Catherine's done through the years. But there's also a tremendous future in front of yeah. us. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, as you mentioned, um, the church embracing yeah. uh, this this vision, this mission more fully. Mm -hmm. um, it just seems like Pope Francis is doing such a beautiful work. I hear him speak so much about respect for the elderly and for grandparents and uniting the young and the elderly together. And Benedict, Saint, Pope Benedict, Benedict Emeritus. Saint, but he might be saying <laughs> well, one day. Yeah, if he, probably, he becomes he when you heard it here. Yeah, okay. He probably will. Uh, he probably wrote will. such a beautiful prayer for yes. grandparents. So the church embracing this more and more be such a beautiful thing. Well, we were very blessed from the very beginning. Uh, St. John Paul II. He blessed the first, very first pilgrimage. Pope Benedict wrote a okay. prayer. We wrote to him seven letters and one visit to the Vatican. Um, and I knew that once he saw the request, he would write the prayer. There was never any doubt in my mind about that. Grandparents just need to, it's like switching on the light when you say to grandparents, you have a vocation. Because grandparents don't know they have a vocation. Mm -hmm. Many grandparents like myself thought only priests had a vocation. But the vocation of a grandparent is to pass on the faith. That's their responsibility. Yeah. And so many of us grandparents feel we're failing. I know you've got a wonderful mm. family of grandchildren yourself, and it's not all roses. You know, and being a Catholic grandparent today, is, it can really present us with huge challenges that we never thought we'd have to face. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we're broken and fragmented families. And when this happens, when there's divorce, we have divorce in our own family, um, and some of our children are fallen away from the faith. Mm -hmm you really think you're failing yourself mm -hmm. and you don't know who to turn to. You don't know what to do. So when we wrote to the church and said, please, please empower grandparents to get Pope Benedict's prayer, to get that affirmation for grandparents was unbelievably wonderful. Mm -hmm. And that, that, parents, that grandparents' prayer is now in 25 different languages because it's, it's a universal prayer for grandparents because grandparents everywhere feel the same. They have no agenda. Yeah. They just want the best. Right for their grandchildren. Well, and it's so wonderful that you have this association because in the church, even, you know, those, there's a group for young mothers, yes. and then there's a group for married, and then there's a group, well, you're my, you may be widowed, but you're still a grandparent, and you're in another season of your life, mm -hmm. and you still need support, and you need, you, need to, you need to know your purpose and to say, where do I belong? Where do I fit in? And, and, and it's very difficult because until very recently, grandparents weren't sure where they fitted in. We all, the church recognizes, and we all know, that parents have absolutely the ultimate responsibility to bring up their own children, to bring up their families. But grandparents, um, Archbishop Paglia from the Pontifical Council for the Family, two years ago communicated to us that grandparents are the preeminent collaborators with the parents in the upbringing and education of the grandchildren. And grandparents needed this clarified because you know yourself that the mother-in-law, a grandmother is always a mother-in-law as well. Mm -hmm. And there's the in-law and the outlaw. Right. You can very quickly right. become the outlaw. So we, right. you know, we have to tread very carefully. So just yeah. having that clarified for us, I think, really helps also the recognition of the church. The grandparents have a, a vital role, a vital role in today's families. For either of you, you mentioned vocation in union with grandparents, and it, yes. it is. It might be the first time anybody's hearing this. 
Where do you pull this from in, in terms of scripture tradition or yeah. theologically? Yeah, theologically, um, there's a lot to it, but you can you know, just pick out and start with Genesis. Uh, when God created Eve because Adam, he wanted company for Adam and Adam was alone, the first thing he told them was go have a family. And that family unit um, is something that is everlasting. And it was designed by God to stay a strong family unit where everybody could support everybody else as they you know, mature throughout this world. And not only that, it's an everlasting vocation and an everlasting relationship as demonstrated by Jesus when he brought um, his, his mother up to heaven uh, because he honored her so much. Yeah. Crowned her queen of heaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the theology goes on to say that this relationship last for eternity, wow. mm -hmm. not yeah. just in, on earth itself. Right. Right. Catherine, yeah. oh, and I, I think that so many people, we don't even think that Jesus had grandparents, I know. right? Sorry. So tell, tell the story of his grandparents and who they were. Well, I, I, you know, we all, I think one of the things about our faith is that we can reflect on it and think about it. And the, the, the grandparents of Jesus were St. Joachim and St. Anne. And I, I oft, I've always thought that when the angel Gabriel appeared to Our Lady in the Holy Home at Nazareth, that Joachim and Anne would have been in the home at that time. And a girl, when she gets pregnant, she normally goes to her mother and tells her. So I often thought that Mary would have gone straight to her mother and told her that she was pregnant with Jesus. So Joachim and St. Anne would have been in the house. That was the first domestic church, mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. place where the family grew, where it was the center of the family. Um, I think it's a place where Joseph and Mary would have probably got betrothed, where they left wow. to go up to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And I often wondered why St. Anne didn't go with Our Lady. Mm -hmm. this very precious daughter, and she, but they had to probably go somewhere else for the census. Mm -hmm. I often wondered how they felt at the massacre of the innocents, mm -hmm. the holy innocents. And then you can't help but draw parallels to what was happening then 2,000 years ago in our faith and what's happening today with the huge refugee crisis and the enormity of the anxiety and the worry and the pressure that grandparents everywhere are feeling. Mm -hmm. And they need to know that we are supporting them, that we're in solidarity that even if we can't touch them, our prayers are there for them. Mm -hmm. So the, the Catholic Grandparents Association is practical as well as spiritual. Yeah. You know, the, the grandparents are the prayer warriors. Their, their, their vocation is rooted in love. They have no agenda other than to do the very best they can for their grandchildren. And we're there to help them with that. The meetings that we have every month support them, value them. They come together. You ask them what's the most important thing about the association for you and they often say it's because we're no longer alone mm -hmm. we feel that we're no longer on our own we have somebody else yeah well you're doing an amazing work in just sharing today because i think a big part of the work of the enemy is to cut us off from our past to to forget and, and you're receiving this revelation of what gift can i give to our lady and it was like remember her parents yeah, because we're not thinking, we're not remembering. How did we get so cut off from our generations and even speaking about this spiritually and you're helping us to remember those we dismembered? But you know, Jim, it's really important what you just said there because all we have to do is tell the story. Tell the story. We don't have to have a degree in theology to tell our children about the Trinity, about three persons in God, to read a Bible story, to teach them simple prayers. You know, it's just telling the story. When Jonathan Sachs, who was chief rabbi in London was asked how the Holocaust, how did the people mm. survive during the Holocaust? He said they never forgot to tell the mm. story. In Russia during communist times, what happened? How did the faith survive? They never forgot to tell the story. The mm. generation passed it from generation to generation. They passed on the baton of faith. And I've heard it said that we're always just one generation away from the extension of our faith. Mm -hmm. So if we drop the baton, if we fail to pass it on, and we are in danger of doing that, and I believe that's why grandparents are called at this moment in time. And I think every grandparent is being called, every grandparent who's watching us today, the reason for the association. Our Lady gave us a rest for 2,000 years. Now it's the mm -hmm. grandparents' mm -hmm. turn, and look at us. Mm -hmm. We're younger, we're healthier, 
Um, I mean, in our association, we have grandparents who are running marathons and climbing mountains and jumping out of airplanes for charity. Mm -hmm. I had a grandparent who said to me very recently, who was 90 and very stereotypically a grandparent, and we're dating. <laughs> so, I mean, grandparents have a new lease on life, yes. and they are the... Really, you know, they're the glue in the family when mm -hmm. things go wrong. Mm -hmm. When there's divorce and if it's your son, it's the grandparent who's very often the victim. And what do they do? How do they keep the peace between all the factions? Mm -hmm. In multicultural, multi-faith families, you could have eight grandparents, ten grandparents of different faiths. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and that's the force that needs to be used for good and not yes. for evil. Because if you are that grandparent and, and the fr family is fractured, you can do a lot of harm, too, if you want to. And you have to say, here I am in this new place in my life. How could God use me and assess your own vocation and where you are? for good how can i repair things that maybe have been broken down how can i how can god use me to restore love and hope and truth and history and to say no that's who you are i know who you are and i you know we can help you you belong to us mm -hmm. grandparents need to be given that confidence joy mm -hmm. they need to be told and reminded of how powerful their contribution to the family is in, in every possible way. You know, I mean, I had a bishop at one of our pilgrimages, we had um, Bishop John Hine, who was our patron in England. And he said he was by his godmother's bedside when she was dying. And he was holding her hand and she looked at him and she said, John, she said, do you know that I have prayed for you mm. every day of my life? Yes. And he said, it just hit me. And when he said it, it hit it hit me and I thought, who prayed for me every right. day of my life? Mm -hmm. Who do you pray for every mm -hmm. day of your life? Mm -hmm. And do you tell your children yes. and your grandchildren, mm -hmm. I'm praying for you every day of mm -hmm. my life? Yeah. It's Catholic Grandparents Association. We're going to take a break. We want to hear from you. Uh, share with us about your own grandparents or what it means for you to be a grandparent. 205-271-2980, 800-221-9460. Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. We'll be right back. Don't go away. We want to hear from you. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, we want to hear from you, so give us a jingle at 205-271-2980 or call 1-800-221-9460. You can always send us an email. I know grandmas and grandpas out there that have emails, and they can email us, Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. And I think, Catherine, some of the things that we were talking about is, is just the value and the yes. dignity and worth of, of being a grandparent. I mean, our society... I mean, medically now, we have euthanasia, we have assisted suicide, it's kind of like you're a burden, you don't belong here, if you would just go away, you know, then our lives would be better, but that's the culture of death, and the culture of life in the church would tell us different. And so many grandparents feel that they are a burden. They, I've heard them saying it, but I'm no use now, I'm worthless, I'm no good to anybody. Where are the families? Where are mm -hmm. the grandchildren? That's when they need to be plied with love. Mm -hmm. That's when they need to be told how incredibly valuable they are. Mm. And only we can do that. Right. You know, only, only this generation. There's also a phenomenon here because grandparents can be as young as 38, 40 and as old as 110. So right in the middle, you've also got the sandwich generation. Mm -hmm. You've got grandparents who are taking care of their grandchildren and who are taking care of their own parents. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got a huge generation of great-grandparents now. We mustn't forget the great-grandparents. Mm -hmm. yeah. They are mm -hmm. so incredibly important. Yeah. yeah. I think of, is it the fourth commandment? Yes. Honor, Honor your, your mother, mother and your father. Share with us a little bit about that. Well, so maybe my talk to us about how that relates to grandparents. Yeah. Um, the commandment that God, you know, God gives us these commandments, which are really a roadmap to a successful life, uh, along with many other things that He gives us. But honor thy father and thy mother. You know that that's a commandment that sort of changes based on the relationship and the age. Yeah. So a parent to a child, a child to a parent. You know, there's that's pretty pretty easy to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, but then when it's the 
the child grows up and becomes a parent themselves, then what is the relationship between the parent, the grandparent, and the grandchild? Or the, right. Yeah. And that's where some grandparents get a little confused, and it's easy to get confused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But nope. it's pretty mm -hmm. straightforward that this relationship doesn't end. It may transform some, but even I have a 93-year-old mother who I love, mm -hmm. and I go to her for advice. Mm -hmm. that's right. And all of her grandchildren love her dearly mm -hmm. because she has expressed so much love to them. Mm -hmm. And the advice that she gives them is always the advice of, this would be the path that God would have you walk. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Beautiful. Because that's in her heart. And she's also a prayer warrior. Mm -hmm. She prays the rosary every day, even at 93, for mm -hmm. all of her grandchildren, mm -hmm. for all of her children, right. for all of our wives, mm -hmm. for everybody within this family. Mm -hmm. And I believe there's tremendous power in that because our family is so blessed and mm -hmm. so lucky right. to be, to that there's so much love. That, Nothing gets in the way of that. Mm -hmm. She raised the, a good boy. Yeah, nobody <laughs> wants anybody to get that's in the way of that. That's the point, though, that the, the yeah. thing that grandparents have to give, that so many parents nowadays don't have to give, is their time. Mm -hmm. You know, when we were young, we wanted different things for our children. We wanted the best education, the best husband, the best wife, the best career. When you get to our age and you've lived life's experiences and you've been honed by your faith yeah. and you realize how important your faith was to you, your only agenda, really, is to pass on your best. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking, Mike, when you were talking, you know, I remember when I was a child, you know, as I was a, when my grandchildren were small, my children were small, holding them by the hand and walking them along for safety. I was walking along, not quite recently, with my little, tiny little granddaughter, and my feet were killing me. So I was hobbling, mm -hmm. and she's looking at my shoes, and I said, oh, my God, Annie. I said, my feet are killing me. She said, the first thing we're going to do for you is to get you some new shoes. <laughs> 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 what, what's yeah. happened to me? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, what's happened to me? I mean, you, you look in the mirror, and you see your mother. You never thought you were mm -hmm. going to see your mother or hear mm -hmm. your mother's voice. Mm -hmm. But that's the yeah. beauty of the generations. Yeah, and, that, and there's such a connection between yes. Those of us getting older or elderly yeah. and, and the young, I hear their vulnerability. Young yes. children yeah. are vulnerable. We're getting vulnerable. The older we're getting. They're dependent. Right. We're getting more dependent. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's amazing how we connect. It's the people in between that remain pretty constant mm -hmm. that don't get that relationship oftentimes. But these generations, the very young and the older, are really being reunited right. around vulnerability, loneliness, mm -hmm. dependency, trust, those kind of things. Yeah. And when you, you know, and there's different stages when a child grows up and you have that sort of irreplaceable bond of trust with your grandchild. As they get up to the teenage years and they get into trouble, very often the grandparents' door is always open where the parents' door is closed right. mm -hmm. and they'll come to you first. Mm -hmm. If you're coming, you know, you get bad, re bad results at school for an exam, you go straight to the grandma and say, listen, will you speak to mum and dad for me? Right. You know, mm -hmm. and also there's a, you know, my daughter will always come, if she's, if she's really stuck, she'll come and say, mum, what do you think? Or, or I hear, you know, I'm going to tell your grandmother. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't, whatever you do, don't tell granny. Right. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to let you down. There's right. this mm -hmm. incredible... You know, the earlier program you were talking about, the social, the business aspect of the Catholic faith and how it fitted in, right. and it, they said it was person-centered. Well, with grandparents, I was thinking the family, it, they're family-centered. Mm -hmm. They're there right in the middle of the family, watching everything, guarding everything, protecting everything, and passing on every opportunity they yes. get, mm -hmm. their love and their faith and their hope for the future. Yeah. So, I mean, if you couldn't do anything else except teach your grandchildren to pray, mm -hmm. I would say teach your grandchildren to pray. pray. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think one of the things that we've always done, and I always do tell our grandchildren this at Thanksgiving when they're all at the table and everything, once we know that our sons or our, our daughter-in-laws or our daughters become pregnant, that life begins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we, as a couple, begin to pray daily for that baby, even in utero as they're growing yes. and all nine months of the pregnancy. And we have had the privilege, thank God, because they're all in state, um, maybe in crazy states of mind, but in the same <laughs> state. But we get to go and be there the day that they were born. Yes. You know, and, and, and so when they go through their trials and stuff, you could kind of anchor them and go, hey, I know you. 
you know, because you have that spiritual no. connection. And you may be broken because the relationship is broken or you're far away, whatever. But that spiritual connection that you can have with your grandchildren, I mean, that comforts our own souls. It's just like we that's one thing we know we did right. We may have done a lot of other things wrong, but the power of all that in them. But just being there, I mean, I, I was very graced with my first grandchild, I cut the umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. And you know, there was an incredible sensation. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't, uh, when I cut that umbilical, I was actually drawing her closer to myself mm -hmm. in many ways. Mm -hmm. And I felt it. I, I said, this child is not detaching. This is, child is becoming part of me. And I, you know, as she's grown up and I watched her, she's very challenging. And, I, and she often makes me, uh, you know, proposes questions to me that I just haven't got the answers mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just not smart enough mm -hmm. to answer her. Mm -hmm. And so I always say, darling, I'm so delighted you're thinking like that. Mm -hmm. I hope she's not watching this program. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Otherwise, but seriously, I said, you know, I'm so glad that you're thinking like that mm -hmm. and you're taking your faith seriously and you're questioning it because you need to. Mm -hmm. That's good. You need to be informed. But don't forget to pray. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, and don't forget to go back and say thank you, Grand. Will you pray? The exams are coming. Right. Please, will you pray? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm doing my driving test. Please, yes. will you pray? Yes. Don't forget to go back and say thank you. Mm -hmm. And when you pray for something and you get a response from God, don't forget to tell your children. Mm -hmm. They say, "Well, oh, you're very lucky." Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't lucky. Mm -hmm. I prayed. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to say please and thank you mm -hmm. and sorry. Pope right. Francis always says that right. it's the, the basis for any good relationship. Mm -hmm. Please thank you and sorry. That's right. Mm -hmm. We're going to go straight to an email. It said, I care about my granddaughter and her salvation, but her parents, my son and daughter-in-law, do not seem to be concerned with religion or practicing the faith. If they will not have her baptized, should I? Is it wrong to go against the parents' wishes, or in this case, apathy, in order to look out for my grandchild. And this is Anne Marie from Florida. And what would your advice to Anne Marie be? I don't know if she can take the children not to be baptized without the um, parents' permission. And I'm not sure how the priest would react to it. She's, you know, it's a, it's a real dilemma. Mm -hmm. when, the, when your children come and say, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I think, you know, I'm gonna let them make their own decision. It's, it's heartbreaking for the parent. And I, I, I share the experience mm -hmm. because I've been there. I think you have to pray, and you have to pray, and you have to hope, and you have to talk to them, and you've got to keep the communication going. If it's apathy, I think apathy is the greatest sin. They haven't, if, it, if, it's, if they're apathetic, they haven't said no. Mm -hmm. They haven't said yes. And I'm sure you're going to mass every day. I'm sure you're going to mass on Sundays. I'm sure that you'll have an opportunity to look after this child and love her. And every opportunity you get, you can take her to mass yourself of course, with the parents' permission. You can teach her prayers. You'll have something in your home. You'll have a little domestic church. You care this much about your faith. Mm -hmm. She'll pick it up from you. By osmosis, she'll pick it up. You'll show her the difference between right and wrong. Getting a child baptized again, it's, it's, it's a parent's mm -hmm. decision. Mm -hmm. What you have to remember too is that children will eventually make their own minds up. Mm -hmm. They haven't got the choice now because you're making choices for them and on their behalf. But they will make their own choices. And their choices will be influenced by your love and by your example. And you are the role model for your children yeah. and for your grandchildren. And if you go on doing what you're doing, they're never going to forget That's that. Right. When you plant the seeds of faith in a child, very young, they go deep, deep into the soil. And you don't know when those seeds are going to blossom. That's right. This life, you might not see it. That's, That's right. But you can be sure mm -hmm. that they will blossom in mm -hmm. this generation or the next generation. So just go on doing what you're doing, loving, particularly with your children. I'm a great believer that when I go, um, my children will follow my example. They're just resting. They're letting me do it. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. And they'll, you, you trust your children and your grandchildren. They will make the right decision. Mm -hmm. And just because they're not getting baptized now doesn't mean you're not passing on your values, of your morals, right. and your faith. It's well said. You're the source. Mm -hmm. You are the source, the mm -hmm. essence of mm -hmm. that faith for your children and for your grandchildren. Yeah. Okay, let's go straight to this email. It says, when it comes to Christmas and birthdays, I have a very specific set of guidelines for gift giving. Something for play, something to wear, 
something to read, and something for prayer. As a grandma, I love the idea of spoiling my grandkids, but I also want to help them grow, which is why I give them books and sacramentals. Is it typical for them to receive a rosary, prayer books, biographies of saints, or take, or take a day trip to a shrine where they can pick their own souvenir from the gift shop? And I wanted to share my experience with other grandparents, and this is Margaret. <laughs> Margaret, That's you're smart. wonderful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Margaret, please join the Catholic Grandmother <laughs> Association because we absolutely need you. That is the most wonderful advice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, you're covering. It's very holistic. Right. You know, it's physical, spiritual, emotional, sharing. It's mm -hmm. just wonderful, Margaret. And thank you for sharing that with us. What would you think, Joy? I think that's a great idea. I mean, we do things. You know, we do gifts, and then you, you know, they everybody wants money, so you do money, and and then at Christmas, you know, and birthdays, you do special things, and but then we're always kind of dropping plants and seeds mm. all year yeah, long, yeah, the yeah. best of our ability that we can do and give gifts, and and that's fun, and but you have to, you have to keep the door open, yes. um, you you as a grandparent have to decide that you are going to be a force for good. And hope. That's what you you have to decide that. No matter how you've been hurt in the past. Because we've all been hurt. We you know, our children have disappointed us, their spouses may have disappointed us, um, other grandparents may have disappointed us in that relationship. But you can't you, that's not your excuse to say, Well, I didn't get that, so I don't have to give that. That's not our excuse. We have to love better than that. The other the, the, the other little difficulty I find is that some of the grandparents' children get jealous. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you have stepchildren and your own children, they're, all, they're, they're looking, they're very conscious. You know, you get one thing more than me or one thing more than me. So grandparents need to try and be even, as right. even as they can, and sort of give age-appropriate gifts. Right. And if you're a long-distance grandparent, there's no reason for not keeping in touch. It's very, very easy. I find one thing I've always done, and I know they'd always expect me to do it, is I always say, as well as whatever the little birthday greeting, all my love, all my kisses, big hugs, um, God bless you. Mm -hmm. God bless you and keep you safe from me always, if they're away. Mm -hmm. So there's, I always instinctively, not as a matter of course, bring in some element of my faith. It is, I, it's automatic for me to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think another thing of your own self-awareness is you have to be who you are. Yes. <laughs> you know, you're not going to compete. You're not going to compete in a workplace. You're not going to, you just have to be who you are. So if a grandparent's going to buy a car and you're going to give $50, that's <laughs> what you're going to do. Yeah, exactly. That's who you are. It's okay. But it's not a competition. It's not and a it's competition. It's not a competition. Right. right. You know, and a visit is not an inspection. Right. You know, the, oh, grandma's coming. Start cleaning that. Right. No, no, it's just not an inspection. Right. And you know, in the very beginning, if you lay down those, I never go anywhere. It's Irish as well. My mother would say, with one hand as long as the other. Mm -hmm. You always bring something. Mm -hmm. you know? But again, you've got to be careful. If it's sweets, do they, are they going to be allowed to eat the sweets? Right. When are they going to be allowed to eat the sweets? And I think, too, when it comes to gifts, sometimes if they're going to be expensive, you need to check it out with the parents. Yeah. You need to check it out yourself, too, that time is equally as important. But, Margaret, you got it mm -hmm. just absolutely mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Do you know, Catherine said she's Irish. I didn't notice that. <laughs> Something about, something about the Greens. I just I <laughs> was trying to figure that out the whole show. <laughs> Tell us what kind of association an individual can have with the association. What, what, what are the different levels? What's it like? Yeah, um, the association works through the church. So there... Marriage and family life offices within the diocese and the Office of Evangelization also often look at the Catholic Grandparents Association and say, you know, we're really struggling with, you know, trying to help families out and trying to catechize children uh, because, as we know, we don't have the religious doing it anymore, so the church needs a little help. And we don't have the full solution, but grandparents can help. And then they come to understand this huge resource of grandparents who were catechized well who have a wonderful bond with the children and who have a passion to have those children learn and live the path that God would have them follow. So oftentimes dioceses will get very involved and help spread the Catholic Grandparents Association to parishes. Within a parish, with the permission of the parish priest, right. we develop what we call CGA chapters. Okay. And they're run by lay people, just somebody who has a passion. They call us up and they say, we'd really like to be involved in the Catholic Grandparents 
Association. So what they do is they just facilitate a meeting. Yeah. They don't have to be catechists themselves. They don't have to know everything about everything. But that meeting then takes place once a month or more or less often as they wish. And at that meeting, the grandparents get together and that's where they find the support for each other with, the, with both the challenges that they face and they can celebrate the successes mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And they also receive both spiritual and practical ways to help pass on the faith. Mm -hmm. And then they pray together, pray for each other. And then if you don't belong to a parish group, you can still become a member, and we do the best that we can to help you and give you the information that you need to be a Catholic grandparent. We've even published a book, The Catholic Grandparent's Guide mm -hmm. to, be, to Being a, uh, a Grandparent. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a number of resources that we can, that we can offer to help grandparents. Well, that is refreshing. So there you are. If you're out there and you're a grandparent and you've not been a part of the association, maybe you didn't even know they even existed, and you're thinking, I could do this in my church. There's something I could do. Or you need help being a grandparent. You know, maybe you haven't done that really well. And maybe you have burned some bridges. Well, this is a group that can help you come together to say, how can we repair? How can God use you? You can get some advice, mm -hmm. get some counsel and say from someone else to say, oh, yeah, I did that. That was not a good thing to do. Let me help you. But Margaret, the sharing, you see, Margaret is sharing immediately. And that's what it's all about, too. Mm -hmm. It's sharing the resources. All the different chapters all over the world. We have a fantastic web, you know, with lots and lots of resources on the web. So reach out to us on the web because not everybody is a meeting person mm -hmm. and everybody can get to meetings. A lot of people are watching us saying, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. There are lots of things you can do. You can pray. Pray for the Catholic Grandparents Association. Pray for grandparents everywhere who are struggling. Pray for their grandchildren. And we will pray for you. Because mm -hmm. that's the beauty of the prayer that, of, our, of our faith and our church and our community. Um, the web, you know, go on to it. Get, ask your grandchildren to go on for you. Get them to teach you. Mm -hmm. Google. Mm -hmm. It's amazing we're the only Catholic mm -hmm. grandparents mm -hmm. association, as you said. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. this, it's extraordinary. Right. But we are here, and we are here to help and to support each other and to value each other. You know, Jim, you said much earlier, it's the valuing of the grandparent. Yeah. Yeah. Every aspect of their lives, you know, their, 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 their age, their infirmities, we're all going to yeah. be there one day. Mm -hmm. It's not that, it's knocking on the door. We're all on... You know, as I say, in the corridors, waiting. Yeah. We're all on borrowed time. Oh, we are. <laughs> but isn't it great? Yes, isn't it, it is. wonderful to be a grandparent, even yes. on borrowed time? Yes. Mm. You know. Catherine, Michael, thank you so very, very much for this time. It's Catherine uh, and Michael. Go to CatholicGrandparentsAssociation.org. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. Thank See you. you Welcome back. Well, you know what? You are an important part of the family, and we would love to have you join us live right here on this set. You could be in our audience today. We have some audience people with us. You can take a pilgrimage to EWTN, come to the shrine, come to Irondale. It would be beautiful. The weather's fine, so if you're from the north, it's nice here. Just go to the pilgrimage department. You could do that by emailing pilgrimages at EWTN.com or give them a call at 205-271-2966. You can come here, be with us, and you can even meet our guests that we have. So please come to EWTN. We'd love to have you. Now, we also want to remind you to pick up your copies of these two very special books from EWTN Religious Catalog. First, Praying with Mother Angelica, Meditations on the Rosary, The Way of the Cross, and Other Prayers. These short but powerful reflections from Mother Angelica will lift your soul to heaven and lead you yeah. into a thoughtful reflection on the love of God and the life of Our Lady. It's a great addition to your collection of Mother Angelica books, and you can get it at Religious Catalog, EWTNRC.com, and it's item number 8008. Now, we got that, and we're going to journey with that. 
Ford Lens, we're excited about it. Also, Joan's book. So Joan Lewis, she has a wonderful book, and it's A Holy Year in Rome, The Complete Pilgrim's Guide for the Jubilee of Mercy. Joan will help you discover the treasures of Rome, learn interesting facts about the Catholic faith, develop a deeper appreciation for the Holy Year of Mercy. You can get that at EWTNRC.com, and it's item number... 3338 or just call 1-800-854-6316 go right now we're going to go straight to Joan who is in Rome and here let's wonderful things she has for us today well hi Jim and Joy and greetings to everyone at home it was a really big weekend here an awful lot of big news but the big story, of course, was the arrival on Friday in St. Peter's Basilica of the mortal remains of two extraordinary confessors, two men dedicated to the sacrament of confession. I'm talking about St. Padre Pio. He was, of course, an Italian Franciscan. And the other was Leopold Mandic, and he was from Croatia. Now, on Saturday, the Holy Father met 80,000 people members of groups, Padre Pio prayer groups, who were in St. Peter's Square. And as a matter of fact, it was a lot of fun. Uh, several of those groups were on my plane on my recent return to Rome from um, Houston. Now, Padre Pio, this were, these were groups supporting him. And so the Holy Father's talk was dedicated to Padre Pio, St. Padre Pio. And listen to these beautiful words. Pope Francis said, we can say that Padre Pio was precisely a servant of mercy. He was full-time, serving sometimes to the point of exhaustion, the apostleship of listening. He became, through the ministry of confession, the living caress of the Father, who heals the wounds of sin and revives the heart with peace. St. Padre Pio, said Francis, never tired of welcoming people and listening to them, spending time and energy in order to spread the perfume of the forgiveness of the Lord. Really, really beautiful words. Now, these prayer groups, and many of these prayer groups, they were founded in the mid-20th century by Padre Pio, by the saint himself. They're all over Italy and in many countries um, throughout the world. And, of course, the Pope thanked them for coming to Rome to venerate the remains of their saint. And he said to them, prayer is the greatest strength of the church. We must never let go of the habit of prayer. Since the church bears fruit, only if she does as Our Lady and the Apostles, who were persevering with one mind in prayer. Beautiful words, an amazing weekend, but time's up. Hope you had a good weekend, too, so back to you at home. Thank you for another wonderful report. Joan, Father, great to have you with us. A, a Father, thought a about to our be show here. today? Oh, it's a, this is a wonderful show, very needed topic. You know, much of our audience, they're, uh, they're either grandparents or great-grandparents, and I'm sure they're, they're going to benefit from this, but um, the, the Catholic Grandparents Association doing powerful work, you know, uh, and providing so many resources, and it's good to know that there is a place where uh, grandparents and great-grandparents can have access to these resources, diff just different ideas, uh, places where they, a place where they can be encouraged, you know, and, and uh, they offer so, so many uh, uh, thoughts and ideas for uh, spiritual and practical things, and uh, I think that's that's great for all of our audience to to be aware of. And, Absolutely, yeah. well, we all need support, yeah. especially mm -hmm. our seniors, especially grandparents. Yeah. Father, give us a blessing. Sure, sure. Lord God Almighty, we thank you, Lord, for uh, all of our grandparents and great grandparents and our parents, God. And Lord, we we pray, God, that you uh, nourish us continually with your love, Lord, the love of the Heavenly Father, so that we may be strengthened as as parents and grandparents and great grandparents to give this love to all of our children and our grandchildren. And may Almighty God bless you all with his strength and with his peace, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. What a joy to be with you today. And isn't it wonderful to be a part of the EWTN family and generation to generation to be bold in our faith, to pass it on to the next generation that they too would share with those yet unborn the praiseworthy deeds of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones, generation to generation. 
Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.